Hello everyone, um, E3 has already been played, um, <laughs> uh, I hope everyone's doing well, I'm back again today with another video, I, I haven't been making a lot of videos recently, recently, for, for one I had summer school, uh, and then also I'm trying to improve my own knowledge and my own, and my own ratings and rankings as much as I can, uh, so then I can make these videos much easier and I have much more knowledge to give, um, for example, as of yesterday, I, I achieved my second norm for Anti-Chess International Master, which I earned both of mine in 1 plus 0 tournaments, where I reached the minimum amount of games for, for and 2300 performance, which is 12 games or 2300 performance, in 27 minutes, so it was by no means easy, it was quite difficult. And, and so yeah, I have that now, and hopefully I'm going to start putting out some more videos in the next couple of weeks. Um, one thing that I think will be done in the next two weeks, I, I hope, is I've been working on this really big project which hopefully will benefit my channel and will benefit a lot of people uh, in the future. However, today I'm going to be looking, I'm going to be showing you guys a game that that I had the other day. It was, it's basically my first game where I've had zero inaccuracy, zero mistakes, and zero blunders. So I basically played my first perfect game. Uh, this doesn't include against things like E4, or D4, or D3, or any lost openings. This is like legitimately I, I played my first perfect game and so I thought it would be interesting to share. So anyways, this game, I have the white pieces, and with the black pieces is International, international Master Alex R58. Um, so at the time of this game, my rating was 2212, and uh, and I, the IM's rating was 1967. So by no means an easy opponent. And of course, I started with E3. Uh, we have B5, we have... Uh, Bishop obviously has to capture an interesting move that you don't see terribly often, but uh, we have h5. So I take I take this pawn. Uh, if you recapture a king, it's not like it's not a good because after this, there's actually an interesting move e4, which after the rook capture, rook captures your king's blocking your bishop. It's not a good. You're going to be able to push the c pawn to to get the knight, and if you try giving up these pawns. You actually, it's actually lost for black because both the knight and the bishop guard the square for the rook. And obviously if the knight recaptures, you got this move. And then after you move the king, the knight's going to become a loose cannon. And otherwise the bishop, obviously, after the bishop recaptures, you're going to have to come down here and, and take all the pieces. So king generally you wouldn't want to take with in this position. Um, uh, bishop obviously uh, loses to after the queen takes. You got you have g4. And the knight will lose because after pushing the c pawn, the knight eventually has to move, which opens up for the bishop. So takes with the queen. Uh, the queen has to capture down here. And after the rook recaptures, uh, I played the explosive move uh, c4. And basically, what this does is it it gets ahead and it sort of gets ahead in development. So this knight is going to be stuck here for a while. So by pushing this pawn as soon as I can. Uh, it sort of keeps this knight here. Not now. Now my opponent won't be able to develop the knight. So the knight develops to say here or here. Then I've got. To, I'm able to push this pawn, and the knight's not going to be able to develop here because after I push C, uh, after I push this pawn, I'm going to have lots of options. Say, for example, B4. Uh, so, anyways, that's that was the idea behind C4. Uh, we have rook captures, rook captures, and then queen captures, bishop captures. Uh, the reason I like this bishop captures, as actually I'll show in a minute. After uh, I am gives away the bishop, I recapture with the rook. My rook now is fully mobilized. My my bishop's developed, and the c pawn is already threatening uh, this knight. And now I believe this move, in my opinion, was was not a very strong move by an opponent. He played knight to h6, and this does a couple things. So after a rook he ha recaptures, the pawn obviously has to recapture. But this does a couple things. First of all, it gives me the initiative. So by doing this because he has to recapture second, now it sort of gives me an extra move. Now now I have the opportunity to do something, whereas he sort of just gave away a piece, not, like, doesn't really do anything. If anything, it creates a weakness. Um, in the future, if, for example, this pawn uh, become, that isn't there or anything, then I actually have the move, uh, then I can play e4, because this bishop's not going to be able to move from this diagonal or this diagonal. Uh, my bishop's going to capture, and his bishop's going to have to recapture. So this pawn actually creates a weakness for that. Uh, I also like the development of this bishop, because say, if my opponent ever develops this pawn, trying to block this pawn from advancing, and the king's somewhere else, then I actually have this move right here, which sort of uh, cuts the king off from coming back, and also uh, 
uh, there's a possibility that the pawn will have to recapture and the rook opens up on this file. So really it's position, it's it's just a beautiful position for white. I would look to get, uh, uh, try to find positions like this that you can get, like you're, you're going to be able to develop your knight with ease, this knight's going to be developed with ease. Meanwhile your opponent has a weak h-pawn, this bishop, you're not going to be able to develop it anytime soon to this diagonal. You're not going to be able to open up here because of because this bishop's guarding this square. You can't develop your knight. This pawn is very weak. You can't develop this pawn. So just in general, it's not it's not a very pleasant position for black. Uh, okay, so in this position, I play c5, which which obviously threatens the knight. And in this case, black should have played king d2, and um, and and tried to recapture this pawn when I push it with the king. Uh, however, even that, it, it doesn't really end up working out. If he plays something like this, then I'll, I'll play my knight here. And and then sort of, because soon enough, the king's going to have to capture several times. I can even bring my rook over here uh, eventually, and it's just it's a nightmare for, for black. Uh, but black did not play that. Black played the move c6. And so if you guys want an opportunity to uh, pause the video, try to find... Because from now, white actually has a mate in 11. Um, in this move, it's not necessarily, you're not giving up any pieces from now. As you can see, there, there's not really a piece that you can give up. But but pause the video if you want and, and try to find the mate in 11. So, if you did it, uh, congratulations, great job. Uh, the move here is actually knight to c3. And what this does is, um, it threatens to give away the knight and then push the pawn. Uh, which well not necessarily simply push the pawn but um in in this case white plays king d7 after i give away this knight there's just too many threats uh, after this is captured i'm going to be able to push this pawn but in this case after the capture i i played e4 like we talked about before and after this pawn recaptures now this bishop cannot get away this bishop cannot get away from this diagonal or this diagonal that was a weird arrow um and so after my bishop captures, his bishop recaptures, and now there's just a full, there's, this bishop has become a loose cannon. There's nothing you can do, so rook c1, uh, bishop captures, a3, and I'm sure you guys can see it now. Uh, in this case, I played g4, after the capture, g5, uh, bishop, bishop takes that pawn. I started moving my king up the board, maybe put it over here, this pawn, eventually I'm going to sack. So bishop takes f2, I played king c3, and it was in this position that uh, international master Alex R58 resigned. So yeah, I this is this is my first perfect game, and I was I was so stoked when I when I saw that I did this. It was like I was like oh my goodness, like I finally after after all studying and 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 playing for this long, I, I finally played a perfect game, and so I was really happy. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, definitely stay tuned because uh, I am planning something really really big. In, in a couple weeks, uh, I'm also gonna I'm gonna try to put out some more videos uh, soon. And otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe, and uh, I'll see you later.